Let's hear about the shorts first, Peter. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, so the shorts, um, what I've done is I've done the same process, Kelly, to identify long positions, but ones that are real stinkers, so to say, in this screening mechanism. And what I've come up with are uh, Peloton, Zillow, Carvana, and um, Netflix. And these companies are not hedges against my longs. You know, there's a lot of long short managers that do that. They try to do pair trading. I'm not doing that. I'm saying that these are companies whose business models are broken, uh, that did see some very attractive performance and uh, demand during the pandemic. But when you strip that all away, the business models just aren't durable enough to go into the future. And so are you saying these companies eventually are going to have to be merged into somebody else? They're going to go away or they're going to fail? What are you saying here? And, and uh, if, if you're saying no. Netflix is going to fail, stop the presses, man. Well, let me, I, you've asked a lot of questions, so let me first say this. Um, I do think that some exit plans of these companies might be that they would be purchased by somebody else or that they would have to over uh, have a complete overhaul such as Netflix, because I think the programming is the main process with, by which this company has not really got a very positive future. Uh, I think that the business model is just uh, very old. And uh, most people, when you poll them about Netflix, they spend maybe 10 or 15 seconds on a movie and then decide that it's not for them but the algorithm then builds that into your suggestions for future movies. So it's almost uh -huh. like a death spiral. Do you know how many watching. people that I know mm -hmm. spent about 15 hours this weekend watching Stranger Things? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it, it, it stopped my house cold. I didn't watch it. Uh, in fact, I fell asleep. But, but at any rate, I mean, mm. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, not, mm. I'm not sure I'd, I'd write their obit just yet in terms of their content. Because when they I have good content, that, Tyler. When, yes, they, when they have good content, people tune in. Absolutely. And, you know, there's an argument that, you know, one out of 10 or one out of 20 a home run like a venture capital investment might work. But let me also remind you that these stocks have been uncovered by an analytic process. It isn't just our opinions talking about stranger things, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it's a way I look at these stocks and I look mm -hmm. at their EBITDA and their leverage and coverage, which are technical terms from mm -hmm. the high yield bond market, actually. And when I see decreasing trends, I mean, there's no hiding of those. You can't hide from financial From the numbers. Disclosure. The numbers don't lie. No, I, I agree. One of the reasons we love you is you say stuff, man. I mean, I, exactly. there's nobody, <laughs> it, it, you know, the, the greatest, the cardinal sin on television is to come on and say nothing, and we don't have to worry about that with you. <laughs> well, there's a lot of talk therapy going on right now, you know, for <laughs> all of us, because there are just, I think we're so confused, just if I can switch a bit to just where we are in this cycle, right? Sure. Uh, you know, inflation, all of it, uh, the, the um, IPOs of certain SPACs, I mean, the dead bodies along the road for the past year, it's incredible. And I don't even know if we can assimilate all this data. So on top of that, we're trying to uh, identify stocks, which is you know devilish, devilishly complicated anyway. But in this environment where we really don't know where we are in terms of coming out of this horrible position, you know, it just complicates matters even mm -hmm. more. And I do think you know, identifying shorts, ironically, might be a little bit easier in this environment than identifying longs simply because we've had two years of inflated attraction to some of these stocks that when you look at them in the bright sunlight and you say, what is the potential for Peloton, for instance, to thrive when we all can go back to our gyms and healthcare, uh, our health clubs, I think that most of us will say it's probably, you know, seen its better day and maybe it will be acquired. Who knows? But, you know, they've hired McKinsey to help them out on on how to convert and adapt to the new, you know, emerging post-COVID. And, and I don't really have a lot of confidence in that. Mm -hmm.